All right, we are back. It's our final segment this morning with Shauna Huey. She's with Think Tennessee. And the topic, as you see on the screen, voter turnout, why it's so darn low in Tennessee and what can be done. And actually, some good calls with some good insight this morning on things that I'm sure her think tank is, you know, looking at. And she's here talking about it because it's election season. It's, I'll say this. It seems like it's always it's election. It's always election season it in is. Nashville. It is. Always. Nashville. For something. National or local politics. Let's see. We've got uh, Jack's waited through the break. We'll go to him. Jack, good morning. Hi, Jack. Yeah, good morning. I think the reason the turnout is so low is outright disgust. Hmm. All right, it could uh, be. You know, as you said before, um, we know that people paying $250,000 a plate are not the average American. And we know that as a result of which, the average American's voice is not heard. At the local level, we have total corruption where the real estate industry runs the city. There's $150 million sitting at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Meanwhile, the library is cutting back on buying new books. The parks aren't properly maintained. At the state level, we have a state representative team who votes in a law to prevent protests against pipelines, which we don't even have pipelines. Those, that law is blatantly unconstitutional. When I tell my friends and, and, and people around the country about this, they laugh. How could they pass a law that is so blatantly unconstitutional? I said, this is Tennessee. <laughs> they, they, they suppress the vote actively, both in terms of the law and, and in terms of, as you just talked about with felon, the reason that you have that ridiculous chart is because the goal is to suppress the vote. And people know the goal is to suppress the vote, so there's no revelation there. At the federal level, even when we have 85, 90% of the population in favor of something, for example, this thing with the background checks, the politicians don't care. It doesn't matter if 100% of the population is for it. If 90% of the lobbyists are against it, nothing happens. So we all know that the system is completely corrupt from the metro level to the state level to the federal level. So what really is the point of voting? Okay. Man. Well, I'm telling you what, I love I love Jack because he, he's passionate and I agree with a lot of what he said. Now, I get sense you don't want to go much too toward the issue that he makes of voter suppression. But I mean, there are groups in this community and elsewhere that would prefer not to see felons vote because they make an assumption about the way felons are going to vote. And they just assume not have them vote because it'll vote against them. We know that crap goes on. And you do look at sometimes some of the people, and frankly the bozos, that get elected, and you're wondering how they get there and who votes for them because they really don't represent the average Joe. And it, it baffles me. It baffles me. So I hear what he's saying. I Yeah, I mean, I hear Jack saying, look, the system is rigged, and I don't want to participate in a rigged system. And I, I certainly think he's not alone in feeling that way. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not a lot of stats or metrics that I can share that's going to change somebody's mind on that, right? Yeah. But I just keep thinking about a state where we all participated and what that would look like. Because at the end of the day, and thanks to again, thanks to that Tennessee lawsuit, one person, one vote. Yeah. It is true that you can be outspent a million to one, and, but at the end of the day, if every person gets one vote and every person used that right. one vote, we, by definition, would have different outcomes in some of our elections. Okay, and so I guess, and while I agree with what Jack says, what I don't agree with is that, oh, I'm just going to throw my hands up and do nothing. And so, I, I think you can raise awareness like he is and what you do and, and deal with that, but I'm always going to still vote and just not say. I, I believe my vote counts. And, um, Especially now that we've got paper trails. You right, know? <laughs> right. And the alternative, though, is to just give up. And I'm just not going to give up okay, on things like this. And, and, and Jack shouldn't either. And I don't think he will. He's civically minded. But he is frustrated. That's kind of what you're up against. I think that's right. Yep. And that's why we, we actually just launched. It's really cool sometimes when Tennessee is the first in the nation yeah. at something related to voting. Something good. Right? Something so, first in the nation yeah, that we're good at. So right. we just became the first state to have a program that we launched called Mayors Growing Civic Engagement. Mm -hmm. Ten mayors from across the state, Republicans, independents, Democrats coming together to say, we as mayors know what it will take to increase civic engagement in our communities. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to work together and we're going to help each other. You want to start a mayor's youth council? I did that I know how I'll show you mm -hmm. you want to use your parks departments to do that I did that I know how let me show you how so these mayors from across the state coming together that's the sort of thing that really gives me hope that's great All right, let's go to Linda next we've got a couple Linda's Linda good morning hi Linda 
Uh, good morning. Uh, I, along with Ann, uh, the former uh, teacher, uh-huh. and uh, with uh, third and fourth graders, we actually, uh, especially during the presidential election, would uh, contact the election commission and have them bring out polling. Um, oh, you're great. The booth. That's great. And let the kids go through that process. Uh-huh. But they, of course, they were the old, old, old election. Um, polling booth so that I mean it's more intimidating now but uh, I, I'm in a situation where my parents are over 90 years old uh, it's hard for them to stand in a line forever and uh, I've tried to get them to do the early election uh, I mean uh, the absentee, absentee. Ballot thing. Yep. but the thing about it is is the you have to fill out the form every time there's an election so, I mean, if, you know, if they need to have something where the doctor can, and you have to have a doctor's statement, uh, that it can be a more permanent. I mean, you know, the 90 years old, I mean, standing in a line when it's hard to stand, I mean, that's going to be permanent the rest of their life. Right. And it should be, they should have a form where they can get the um, mm-hmm. a ballot in the mail without having to do this every single election. Are you familiar yeah. with that? I've yeah. not absentee so ballot voted. I yeah. haven't either, but I think Linda makes a really good point. And back to thinking, I think Tennessee <coughs> thinking about what have other states done that might make it easier for voters in our state? Okay. And so a lot of states have no fault absentee voting, and that which sounds like mean, something that would help is, Linda's parents, which right? Which would be what? Like you can absentee vote. Okay. for whatever the reason. Okay. You don't have to have a doctor's note or I apply see. beforehand. Um, okay. Some states even have, and again, not saying Tennessee's ready for this, but some states even have vote by mail where they just they send you your ballot mm-hmm. in the mail. And you can sit at your kitchen table and you can do all the research you want. You can fill it out on your own time. And then you can either go drop it off somewhere or you can mail it in. Not sure that's a step that our state is ready for, but I do think it's important for us to know what else is out there in the country. Mm-hmm. And just thinking about what could help Linda's parents yeah. Think about how they would benefit from being able to vote at their own kitchen table and, and not um, having to go wait in long Absolutely. Lines. Absentee ballots. I'm glad she brought that up. We haven't. That's another thing that makes it easier for folks like hers that can't get around. That's right. You know, not everyone can get to the polling places. Um, that's another issue. Let's go to uh, another Linda. Linda, good morning. Hi, Linda. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi, good morning. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm an educator too, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm, I appreciate this, uh, this program so much. And um, uh, it, there's just so many things that we need to to address. And I, I'm I am a I'm a, um, a poll worker and uh, and a continuous awesome. voter and mm. and that sort of thing. Um, and, and you know, very involved. And uh, but it is. I, w- I will have to say that it is. It is. It is tremendously um, frustrating and discouraging to learn on the election night of uh, our most recent election night um, that that the mate, one of the mate, mayoral candidates, uh, you know, could throw in a. a a 1.4 or 1.5 million dollars, and um, I mean, let's face it. You know that that really is uh, that that's discouraging. <laughs> it, it just it just is. You mean the and spending? It really um, you mean the spending that they spend on their campaigns? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, and all right. Well, and that. Yeah. She's talking about the the candidates, and um, you know, Cooper paid for a lot of his own and. And some people maybe don't like that if they're paying for their own. But on the other hand, he's saying he's doing this. He's beholden to no one but himself, to no special interest. So I can see both sides. I don't view it necessarily as discouraging. But that in this country, you have a right yourself to spend as much of your own money to run. That's your right. It's your constitutional right to do that. And I think Linda's point gets back to what Jack was talking about, where it's just this sense that this franchise is for somebody else. It's for mm-hmm. rich people. It's right. for folks who can give $250,000 to have lunch with a candidate, mm-hmm. right? To get something signed by a candidate. And it just starts to feel like, well, I'm never going to be able to participate in yeah. that. Yeah. But still, but still, we all get the same vote at the ballot box. Yeah, we do. And I wonder, it's also about the candidates. And it's a little different at the local level where you can get more grassroots folks that are regular people. But as you get higher, and you worked in D.C. for a while, and you see this, I mean, 
to really run for public office at the higher level, you don't necessarily have to be independently wealthy, but you certainly have to have some type of job that allows you to take time off. And, and a lot of people who have nine to five jobs, it, it's not even a consideration for it's them to run too. for office. It's here too, if well, you think right, about it. Right? Look at our General Assembly. It's a part-time citizen legislature. A lot of lawyers, right? a lot of maybe doctors, private or, or business owners have, that can do their own hours. You've got to be able to leave your job. Let's say you live in Polk County or mm -hmm. you know Lake County, far away. You have to be able to leave your job from January through May mm -hmm. to come to Nashville. That's not everybody can do something like that. Yeah. And those people, that's an incredible public service that they're performing right. to step away from their jobs yes. for that long. I'm just saying, yeah. So how many candidates do you get that you look at and say, he or she is just like me? Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. And, and that's someone you might want to vote for. I don't know. I'm going to run for public office. <laughs> Maybe I'm this is run. the beginning. Let's oh, announce it. I just I'm not, I don't know what I'm running for, but I look forward to going up against some of these candidates and tearing them a new one. <laughs> I would just have a ball in a debate with some of these bozos. I see some of them. You ever sit down with some lawmakers and really talk to them and just wonder, did they leave their brain at home? <laughs> you do. The people that are elected sometimes baffles me. Who's on line five? Carolyn. Good morning. Hi, Carolyn. Hello. Hello. I just. Now, uh, I just Hello, you there? Yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Okay, I, I just now picked it on there and I seen the subject. Okay, I'm a Vietnam era veteran. Okay. Now, as far as registrations all the time. Uh huh. Okay. I don't understand why I can't show up. But I have a military ID, I have a driver's license, I have my original birth certificate, and my original social security card. But they won't let you vote. Now, why wouldn't they? What What else does she need beyond that? What She's got all the ID she needs. Yeah, you have all the ID you need. Why did they say you couldn't mm -hmm. vote? They said no, it had to be registered. Oh, oh right? I'm sorry. Okay. I yep. hear you. So that's what she was talking about earlier is if it was where you could just show up. So she didn't register within the 30-day time period. And she has all... And here's a veteran oh, yeah. who didn't, right? And so we were talking about it, like the kids and their kids. phones and they're only thinking about things, yeah. you know, the day before. But we've got, what did you say, a Vietnam-era veteran? Yeah. Doing the same thing. Okay. And so, again, I, I'm not saying that same-day registration is right for our state right now, but thir a 30-day window is the longest mm -hmm. in the country. Yeah, could you, are there we some that have like week long yeah, windows or something like that? Days, 15 days? And then a lot, you know, some are moving to same day. Okay. But it's all for that reason, right? You get these folks, you start paying attention in the last few weeks. You're a veteran, you want to go exercise your right to vote, and you show up and you can't. Imagine how frustrating oh, that yeah. is. Yeah, well, I think it was for her. So, Carolyn, if you're still watching, what she needs to do is go and register to vote now. That's right. Okay, go, go, go down to the, um, you know, I don't know where she, she lives. You can register online or at GoVoteTN. Do it online. Yeah. If she doesn't have access to a computer, you can go, um, you know, down downtown, wherever it is, uh, the voting headquarters are. Yeah, well, it would be the Howard Building here, I suppose, in Metro, and register so you're set for the next election, That's 30 right. days ahead of time. But yeah, I can see your frustration. Maybe she didn't realize it, but she had everything else she needed. And if you move from another state mm -hmm. where you can do that, yeah. then it's extra convenient. Yeah, exactly, because you're always like, oh, it's different. You have to realize state by state, as she just said, yep. Tennessee's a little different. All right, as we wrap things up real quick, then um, at least from Think Tennessee's point of view, if someone's watching today and people, you know, and a lot of folks here showed some frustration, what do you recommend they do? Uh, one, just keep voting. Two, what can they do to make the system better? Yeah, I mean, when we all get engaged, we're all going to do better, okay. right? So I, I really do think the first thing is go vote, but also understand how modernizing our systems and streamlining them and, you know, putting those paper trails on our election machines, or we didn't even get into the other ways that our state could modernize. Right. But, but know that some of that systemic change really can show up uh, for real people, and yeah. it, it can make a real difference. Don't give up and keep voting, and I hope Ray sticks with it. We couldn't get back to him. He had a follow-up call, but I'll talk to him again soon. Sean, thank you so much thank for coming you. on. It's a pleasure. It Always worth talking about this. I'll be back. Wrap things up with a programming note right after this. Thanks again. Yeah.